No, I, I hear you. I definitely agree with you on that. I mean, it's it's the kind of thing where, you know, we all want to have fun. We all want to have a good time sometimes. I I love party music just as much as anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And, and we all do, right? And, yeah, it's and crazy. It's all good. And But I don't need to have it all the time in my life. Yeah. And I think that, you know, uh, folks who are are in that and that kind of thing, like, you know, that's, that's dope. There's also this kind of stuff, too. And, and, and it's just making people see what the connections are. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, which can be, can be hard sometimes to do, given all the noise that's out there in the culture, yeah? Yeah, the, <laughs> definitely. It get yeah. noisy out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Now, uh, I think we, uh, with all this, with all the subjects that we've been uh, getting close to, I, I was wondering to have like the the uh, the exclusive story uh, of you <laughs> telling us uh, the, uh, the the story of Melly Mel's the message oh. and how does his message applies to today historical momentum yeah. in hip hop and all the social responsibilities that hip hop past as a culture yeah yeah that record grandmaster flash and the rest of the furious five didn't want to do yeah you know what i mean they 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 were like life is about trying to get away from this stuff like we do parties on the weekend so folks can escape their troubles you know what i mean like bob marley said like forget your worries and dance you know like so they didn't want to do that record so the person who produced it was a studio producer this guy named duke booty And he got together, and he, and he tried to sell the whole Furious Five on it and Grandmaster Flash. And they're like, nah, we don't want that. But Melly Mel had this verse that he had at the end of the song uh, that was forgotten about. And it was that whole, you know, a child is born with no state of mind, blind to the ways of mankind. And, it, you know, that whole yeah. verse, right, that whole thing. And, and he said, yo, I got, this, I got this verse. Why don't we try this on it? And so they did. And so the... the That track, that, that record, The Message, um, has Duke Booty's rap. He's, he's the guy rapping through most of the verses. And then the last part is when Melly Mel comes in and just kills it, right? With that, right. With that crazy verse that he does at the end, right? Yeah, the introspective. Uh, the introspective Deep, one. Yeah. powerful verse. Yeah, it's so deep. And, and that's the one where you, you heard that and you're just like, whoa. I remember hearing that for the first time and just stopping and just not believing what I had just heard. But everybody needed to hear that song right at that particular moment, right? Because if you look at it in history, what was happening was the Reagan revolution was shifting all of the yeah. US to the right. Mm -hmm. And that was dispossessing like millions of people. Un until on this outcome, until the current administration. Well, yeah, so it was it's a still cycle. Going. It's still yeah. going, yeah. And, and so people wanted to hear music that spoke to the kinds of issues that they were feeling in their daily lives. There had been a change, right? There was a vibe right. that had shifted. And so that song captured that. That song and Planet Rock in 1982 captured that, sh that shift. And, uh, and to me, those two songs are the most important, two of the most important songs in hip hop because they kind of define what hip hop could be, right? One, on the one hand, like Planet Rock is like this, like, let's go to the club, let's, Let's dance together. It's this utopian vision, right? It's this sort of Zulu Nation vision of everybody coming together, peace, unity, love, and having fun, right? Yeah. And then the message being like, yo, but this is the stuff that we know we have to go back out to yeah. after the show, after after the party's over. Yeah. Like that's all. Like this is the struggle. And, and so. And that yeah. is like the heritage of the Black Panther movement itself. Absolutely. Within hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the whole thing between all rightness. And like let's like let's get free. Yeah. It's like yo, life ain't a life ain't just a party. Yeah, it's also a struggle. Yeah, and and we can get out. Yeah, of, and we all can breathe. You know, we need it together. We, yeah, we need to do it together. We are all suffocated in this. Yes, 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 yes. But uh, we can we can figure out together how we can move through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that those you know to me. Those two records in 1982, came out in 1982, yeah. um, are, are the records that kind of really shaped the, the hip hop that we have now to today. Because there the is potential of hip hop. There is this this um, very polemic video of DMC 
um, talking about um, the actual state of the culture yeah. and, and the whole um, decay yeah. of it. And um, I was I was thinking like uh, on what he said. He said we need a new Melly Mel mm. that delivers a new message because mm. the message that he he was he was putting out there was a message against the decay that the disco culture was bringing into the hip hop culture and sometimes as an underground MC which is profoundly in love with boom bap sound and the whole boom bap uh, vision of the culture um, I feel like there is a certain decay that actually is quite alive and, and hurtful for the culture itself. So I was wondering, what was your, your uh, insight on, on, on that decay that uh, the, the very DMC actually made a comparison of with, with the present day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, my thing is, is, you know, do the best thing that you can do, right? Like, make the best music that you can possibly make. Make the best art that you can, be you, you can best make, you know? And folks will follow, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta lead. And that's the whole thing about hip-hop to me is, like, it's at different points created all these different types of leaders, you know, that, that have said, like, I got a message here, follow me, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that that's... Uh, incumbent on, on all of us to, to to be listening for those messages and then to be to be supporting those folks who are the messengers, you know. Um, and so, you know, in the long run, man, like it, it's it's an open platform, man, for you to be able to take it as far as you think you can possibly take it. Wow. You know? and, and so that's what inspired me to do this particular work. Yeah, that's the best thing that I could possibly offer, you know. Um, and uh, because it can stop and it won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> um, so we are going to turn into the fourth um, chapter of this interview. Okay. And I hope it's the last because I can stay here all day, all week. Fun, <laughs> yeah, enjoy it. I'll enjoy it. It's all good. Yeah. It's all gravy, like it's the Zinni right? Yeah. It's all gravy, yeah. bread. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, this this fourth chapter is called the present day. Okay. Where are we at now? Not just um, hip hop wise, but but social wise and political wise, uh. and and with all the social and political and economic stress that is taking place across the globe, especially in the U.S. What can the hip hop community worldwide can do for advising, for advancing our own social imagination and achieve radical political change? That's a lot, man. I'm, I'm going to rephrase it because I, okay. I, I messed it up. Um, yeah. With all this social, political, and economic unrest that is taking place across the globe, especially in the U.S., what can the hip-hop community worldwide do for advancing our own social imagination and achieve radical political change? Okay, well, I mean... Right now, we're living in this moment of, you know, renewed social movements. You know, people are out in the streets, man, you know, um, for a, a lot of good reasons. You know? Yeah. Um, in the U.S., there's been the Black Lives Matter movement that's spread all around the world. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to bring about uh, accountability, uh, trying to call attention to uh, anti-blackness and what's been done. Um, You know, historically, the injustices that have been done um, to African Americans, to blacks all around the world. Yeah. Um, you know, we've we've had the in, in the U.S. we've had the Dreamer movement, right? Right. The undocumented movement um, to to call attention to like the basic humanity that is being denied of of human beings, right? Um, who are undocumented, and we have uh, the women's movement. Right. Fighting against sexual right. abuse. We yeah, the, the Me Too and the, the Times Up movement. The Times Up movement, um, the Women's March. You know, we have we have the warriors 
uh, at Standing Rock, you know, protectors yeah. of, of the water. The water the protectors, yeah. Yes. And, uh, September so, 3rd. Yeah. yeah. And so for us, like, the, you know, we're seeing, you know, the, and then of course, like, all of this is, is, is uh, happening in a moment where we've got the most reactionary uh, president, unfortunately, that we've ever had. And he's yeah. been unleashed on the world it's by crazy. a small fraction. I want to make this clear. Right, because I, you know, yeah, the a, small one fraction, a, a small fraction of people in the U.S. voted for him, right? Like yeah. a minor, a very small minority, like less than 20 percent of of folks in the U.S. elected this guy, right? Mm -hmm. um, Hillary Clinton had more votes than, than President Trump. Nonetheless, the Electoral College yes. justified it. And, uh, and and now we have the situation that we're in. So it's a great American tragedy. It's not just a great American tragedy; it's a world tragedy. I think you know, and and I feel a responsibility as a, as a North American to to write that. You know, yeah. I think we all do at this point. You know, I think there's mm -hmm. that do, and I think hip hop is in that. Hip hop is right there at the front lines of that. You know what I mean? Everybody from like from like uh, Saba from Chicago to you know, Kendrick to J. Cole to No Name to SZA to like, you know, Solange, like all, like all across the board, folks are making powerful music, you know, expressing this, this great desire for change, for justice. And, and I think that that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I think like I, you know, when I came up, I was coming up with, 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 uh, with Public Enemy, with Chris, yeah. KRS One, with, De La Soul, right, with uh, Rock MC Light, yeah. with Rakim, with Latifah, with, these were my heroes, these were the folks who I looked up to, and, and these days I think kids can look up to, uh, to many of the, the hip-hop artists who are trying to make a change, um, yeah. and they, you know, are figuring out ways to, to be able to lead us towards something better, something new. The thing about art, man, is, is like, it gives us the imagination to be able to imagine a world that's not yet. Hmm. We've had a world of injustice for millennia, right? We yeah. have to imagine a world without that. Yeah. That means that we have to dream of something that has never happened. And so in that space, hip hop, art, hip hop culture has a really important role for us to, for it to play in moving us towards uh, making that imagination real making it a real thing and so I think you know uh, I'm hopeful I, I you know I see what folks are saying and doing you know I see the work that they're making yeah. um, I see how people are reacting to the work and, and spinning that off and I, I think it's a beautiful thing wow yeah in the words of the great late Martin Luther King Jr. life is a beautiful struggle ah yes it is it is it is yes so how is hip hop a place for memory, resistance, and prophecy? Man, we should, <laughs> you named it right there, man. Hip hop is all of that. Like, you know, memory, resistance, prophecy, man. Like, not just resistance too. It's sort of like it's transformation too. You know, so we're holding the stories um, in in the art and the culture, right? We're we're disseminating the stories in the art and the culture. You know, so we're we're propagating the memory, we're giving people hope, saying we've done this before, we can do it again, uh, and we're, we're saying, you know, we can do this, right, we can, we can make this happen, right? right, that despite all of the struggle, we're going to be all right, you know, so that's like, that's, I just have to trust in that, you know, yeah. um, I have to trust in, in the artists who, uh, who have the faith to be able to to instill us with the faith that we'll be able to make it through. That's coming back around to the spirituality piece. Yeah. Um, yeah, but in the end, that, that belief that we're, we're going to make it, that we're going to be all right, is, is, is what we have to be able to hold in this moment. So, with that said, yeah. is there any final insight beyond empathy? <laughs> that you would like to share with our audience? Just that empathy without action is empty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Empathy without action is nothing. Meaningless. It's meaningless. So it's about it's about the empathy, but it's it's it should be beyond just the feels that we get when we hear 
in music where we see a piece of art or a movement, a dance a movement or that kind of thing, or hear, hear something, you know, it's, we've got to move it into to making change. Um, and, and that's the thing about hip-hop, for me, you know, that's the thing that, that I, I, I hold to this day. It made me want to be an activist, it made me want to change the world. And, uh, and I, I think that that's the power that hip-hop has. Yeah. Well, yeah, brother, I'm just I'm thankful. I'm, for, I'm th for, for your questions. And I'm thankful for you. for for this precious time, which you you drop so many jewels on me that I feel like Jacob <laughs> right now. Uh, it's it's crazy. I'm about to put my own online shop. <laughs> I'm out of my parents' house right now. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, um, it's fantastic. Yeah, I actually um, want to give you the thanks of, of um, for for this moment in general, as not just as a as a MC myself and you as a, a historian and an activist and journalist yourself, but but I wanted to give you thanks in a human level oh, for 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 being being able and being also so humble because you didn't have to and. Um, We appreciate it in the name of my team, in the name of Yerofantes, which is the the um, the ones responsible for making this hierophany, uh, which is the manifestation of the divine in the mundane, okay. which is hip hop, yeah, in a way. Still. So, um, in the name of uh, Yerofantes, in the name of my team, in the name of my country, as a as a hip hop culture part <laughs> I want to give you the thanks and it's really deep and your empathy was uh, backed by the action of you coming here and that meant the world to me uh, brother, thank you thank very you much, so much Jeff. Man. thank For you so real. much yeah no doubt esto es Yerofantes poesía y rap conciencia como antes Jeff Chang you already know what it is yo soy Tule Elval hasta la próxima